Hey, so working on the next episode, I've been busy with um, real life stuff. So hopefully that should be up by this upcoming Friday, but I just want to do a quick video on some random things. So one of which is here, like talking about free fall and gravity. In one of the previous videos I did, I talked about um, how with gravity, you could think of it, things falling as like in a parabolic you know, relationship, like x squared plus x plus some constant equals zero whatever you could kind of model it that way really with minecraft and in real life there's drag there's air resistance stuff like that so with free fall um, objects reach a terminal velocity which um, in minecraft is 1.96 uh, blocks per game tick i think something like that i'll show the equations in a bit so what i wanted to do is mess with um setting an initial velocity upwards and then have it come down and figure out a perfect way to model all that. So what I did was I set something like this up. So we have TNT here and then um, break that. Then the sand is going to come back down. It's going to fall all the way down to bedrock. And using the disaster plugin, we could track the, uh, the movement. So let's look at the equations. Okay, so here I'm in MathCAD and uh, just going to look at some of these equations here. These graphs might be a little small, so I apologize for that. Uh, here we have this blue line. This is just the normal um, equation right here. Sorry, let me go backtrack a little bit. This is the graph of the y position versus time. So y position time. And we have a couple different uh, lines here. So with this blue one, this is just free fall from rest uh, with gravity. And you can see it reaches a terminal velocity because the rate of change here is the same. So if we go over to this one, this is the velocity versus time. So don't get this confused for like x distance because really everything's just moving straight up and straight down. So it looks kind of parabolic at first, um, like x squared, for example, but it eventually really flattens out and it's going to approach um, negative 1.96, which is the terminal velocity. So this is just, again, free fall. The equation for that is um, just going to be this right here. Um, because at zero, it's going to be uh, zero, and then it's going to approach negative 1.96 as z, or the time goes to infinity. The notation here might be a little weird. So with an initial velocity, uh, the equation is going to become this right here. So we have the normal component due to gravity and terminal velocity, and then this right here is whatever your initial velocity is, um, and it's going to exponentially decay um, so for example, our initial velocity is 1.411. So it's going to go up and then it's going to come back down. Similarly, you can see your initial velocity here is up here 1.411. And they're all going to tend to the same thing. So the equation, it's basically always going to have with free fall, you're going to have this component here, which is just gravity and terminal velocity. And then whatever your initial velocity is, it's going to be that. So if you have zero initial velocity, it's just going to be free fall like this. And so doing some symbolic stuff, um, this is the acceleration, which is accurate. It's really 0 0.04 blocks per tick squared, but with drag, which is um, with TNT and sand, it's 0 0.02 per tick or something similar to that. You could find it on the Minecraft wiki page. So position is derived from integrating velocity. Velocity is derived from integrating acceleration. However, just using like differential equations and stuff, you can um, derive from here starting forward, or you can start with velocity going forward based on some other information you know. If you want to see the uh, difference between, let me go back some more. This is not very structured, sorry. Um, this red line is what the disasters TNT tracking and sand tracking plugin tells us the position is. The green line uh, for both of these is what I calculated it out to be. So it's pretty close. Obviously with position, there's some like oddities. I think that has to do with how I set the initial conditions for the position. And then um, here it's really close for the velocity. So this is the difference between what disaster tells me the position is and what uh, the calculated equation is. So if we go up to the top, there's some error, but as we get further down, it, the error basically becomes you know, really small. So you can kind of see this here as well. So it's kind of neat. I don't even know what's going on here with the mini map, but we're just going to roll with it. Uh, I talked about this before. This is a really easy way to get sand into an entity state and then align it. Similarly, um, I use it with cannons all the time. Same thing with a lot of other people now. 
when you're using the hammer, you can get it here. So you would use this for like the one shot sand, for example. And it gets really close to being in the same block. So I've showed, I've showed this before, but um, you can see it doesn't even touch. So it falls and with the cobwebs, you can see it gets pushed further than one block. So then you can align it. Um, here's just some more things with quick pulses. So the one on the left and the right are quick pulses. The one in the middle, there is no quick pulse. So you can see how it quickly activates. I use this one a lot, like in redstone, for example. Um, so like if I have just a current going like this, this is super easy as this takes up more space. But when using pulse limiters and stuff, I use this one. Um, so first, the we'll look at this one. First, uh, this gets powered, transmitting power here, a tick later, redstone tick later. This gets activated, breaking the circuit, so it's a quick pulse. Kind of similar here. First, this is going to get powered to hit this, and then it'll move upwards. Um, so now we're going to look at pulse limiters. Here's another quick pulse. And with these buttons, we know that wooden buttons do a different length than stone buttons. Um, so this is going to emulate a stone button, this whole system. So we'll see that exactly the same thing happens in both of these cases. But if we change the input length, this side is still going to be a stone button length. This one is going to be affected by whatever our input is. So if we want to change our length of input, we could use this and dictate um, what we want that to be just by playing with this. So here, basically two little cannons with repeaters and pistons. So based on previous episodes, we know that the length of the pulse going in doesn't matter when uh, a repeater and redstone activate dispensers, whereas with torches it does. And we also know that pistons, by looking over here, the input length doesn't affect when it first pushes. So um, we have a really long pulse going in and we have two different inputs. So this cannon on the left is going to be different based on this wooden button and the stone button. Whereas for every shot with the pulse limiter on this cannon, this cannon, it's going to be the same every time. But when we do the stone, actually take that back, but you'll see, you'll see what it means. So just a point of contrast, notice how the left side, the pistons um, go back quicker than that, but they fire at the same time. That's what I was trying to go for because this is going to be a really long signal over here. The pistons are going to stay open longer and these are going to stay powered longer, but the impulse is going to hit at the same time. So I'll do that again. So that's that and now we can change the input here. So still going to happen at the same time now because it's a longer pulse with the wooden button. This will ex stay extended out longer whereas this is going to just be exactly the same because we're just breaking it into a quick pulse and then lengthening, length, lengthening it out. So basically when this gets powered, it's going to power this entire line and this line. So while this is still powered, now we're going to power this and it's not going to break the current. So now this whole thing is going to stay powered from here, then from here, then from here, then from here. So that's basically just some quick cannoning things. So this is the testing cannon I was I have been using uh, for the past couple months. Some people ask for a download of it. This is not something you want to use on a raid. I mean, look at this. This is not something you want to use on a raid. Uh, what this is, it's basically, I think, the Region 255 floating barrel cannon I made. And I just attached these two sand compressions into one. So each one of these is 4 by 12. That's 48. And then there's two of them. So that's 96. And then to divide that into 255, it's like 2.66666. So basically, it's three tall, um, one, two, and then you get at three. And that's enough sand to fall in however many ticks. And easily, it will. you can switch between um, order of entities, uh, like full stacking, fusion cannoning, um, by changing this here to one tick. And then, so for both of these, it'll stack with zero guider, because it's gonna, the sand's going to fall before the hammer. And um, and then you can switch it back as it goes after. Lots of little things you can play with. Uh, so I've got cobwebs loaded up. So for example, this right here will um, stack without a guider. So let's do that real quick. See how that falls before the hammer. There you go. So let's paste this whole thing back in. Um, I didn't add the second layer, so let me do that real quick. 
Okay, added the second and third layers. So you could see there's that. Still no guider difference. Okay, so that's, you know, order of entities, whatever. And so then we can change it so the sand falls after the hammer dispenses. Again, just by adding this back. Also what I've done here is uh, yellow is for the sand, like wiring for sand compression, um, red is TNT, stuff like that. So you kind of have an idea of what some of the redstone's doing. So here, obviously nothing worked. Um, it didn't full stack because of how the order of entities worked. But yeah, so you know, here's the button. Um, we've got sand compression, orange is both. So all the sand stuff is down here. And then you can see it wraps around and it comes back up through here and blah 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 it's a whole mess um, and then just red is TNT for the main cannon itself this loop goes all the way and so then everything stems from this block here so 